Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Recently I had one of my YouTube viewers ask me about updating Clipper on the devices, on the MCUs. Um, and there are a, a number of different ways to approach this. I like to take a bit of an automated approach. So I'm going to share the approach that I use, uh, which is documented on um, the Voron Design site. So I'm not inventing the wheel here. I'm just uh, using other techniques that other people have already developed. Um, but I'll show you how I do it on my printers. Now, in this case, I'm looking at my test bench printer. My test bench printer is just a, a Raspberry Pi with a octopus, a Big Tree Tech octopus uh, MCU attached to it via USB. I don't have any other hardware. It's literally just the two pieces of um, electronics. So I don't have any motors or stepper drivers or anything like that. But the underlying concept is the same. And if you had multiple MCUs, you can expand upon this technique. So if you had like a tool head MCU, because you were running like a CAN bus environment, you can build upon um, the script that we're going to generate in here in this video um, to basically update as many devices as are connected to the Pi. So uh, it's fairly easy to do. Um, it does require that you terminal into the Pi and have a little bit of Linux knowledge. I'll walk you through the steps that I use um, and then show you how you can automate it from the command line on Linux. Um, so to start with, imagine that you have a printer and the printer's running well, but you know you come to the machine menu here and this is main sale. Um, all of the update steps are all at the operating system level. So it doesn't really matter if you're running main sale or fluid, but for my example, I'm running main sale. So in main sale, if I come to this machine menu, I can see under the system lobes area system loads area here, I can see that I have an MCU. It is a STM32F446 based MCU, and that's my Octopus um, motherboard, my Octopus MCU. Um, it is running version 0 0.11.0 0.205, and then the hex code of, um, of Clipper. Um, and the host is also running that same version, which you can see down below. So the host is a Raspberry Pi. So we have this version installed on a Raspberry Pi, and that's what's running on the Octopus MCU. Now, if I look a little bit further here in the Update Manager, I can see that there is a newer version of Clipper available. It's saying that I currently have the 011.0.205 and 11.0.278 is available. Now, if I click Update here, all this update button is going to do is update the installation of Clipper that's on the Pi. It will not push those updates to the MCU or any tool head MCUs that I might have. Um, you have to do that manually. So I'm not gonna do this update um, from this interface. Instead, I'll show you how to do it from the command line. Now, as I mentioned, um, I didn't invent this process. Um, it's pretty straightforward Linux configuration stuff, but it is documented here on the Voron design page under automating Clipper MCU updates. And I'll share a link to this page in the video description below. Um, this documentation was put together by uh, Dragon, Dragon Kitty um, from the Voron Discord. So thank you to Dragon Kitty for um, all of your help and work um, in this area. And as always, you're always very helpful on the Voron Discord whenever I have questions. So a general shout out to Dragon Kitty from the Voron Discord uh, server. So what we're going to do is set up a shell script. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Linux and shell script commands, a shell script is a series, is a, basically a text file that tells Linux to execute one or more commands uh, one after the other. And so you're just basically taking what you would normally put as multiple individual command lines in um, the terminal window, and you're putting them all into a text file and telling Linux to run them one after the other. Um, so we're going to do that um, for this. Now, it does talk about um, how to configure things, and I'm not going to go into all detail here, uh, but if you want to read more about it, you can come to this page and um, read to your heart's content. So the way this works is we set up a file in the terminal window uh, on the Raspberry Pi or on the host computer, which in my case is a Raspberry Pi 4B. Um, again, this process should be independent of, um, should be the same across any host computer that you use, whether you're using a different version of Raspberry Pi, whether you have um, you know, an orange Pi or anything else. It's all pretty standard Linux commands. Um, so 
we'll have a look at the file in this case. Um, so what I've done is I've pre-created this file and I'm going to run the nano text editor. The sudo command tells it to run as um, basically with root privileges. So sudo nano, and in this situation, I do have a file in this directory. That's the dot forward slash means from the current directory where I'm in. And I've called it update underscore clipper dot sh. Uh, sh is just a naming convention from old school Linux. Uh, it's not strictly necessary. It stands for shell script. So um, I just, I'm an old school Linux user. So I, I stick to those old conventions, even though they're not strictly necessary anymore. It's going to prompt me for the password. And here I've pre-populated the file with uh, some commands that I want it to run uh, one after the other. So the first command, the first line here, um, ignore this GNU nano 5.4. That's just the version of the text editor that we're, we're working with. So the first line is really the sudo service clipper stop. So what this is doing is telling the system to stop the clipper service before we continue. Then it's going to change directory into the current user's home directory and then forward slash clipper. That's where I've installed clipper. Uh, in my case, the user is pi. And um, so it's going to go into the forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash clipper directory and um, put me in that directory. And then from that directory, I'm doing a git pull. Git pull is going to pull down the latest version of clipper from the pre-configured um, GitHub site. Uh, where Clipper is, is uh, stored, or Clipper is built from. So we're going to go and get the very latest version of Clipper from the GitHub site. And then following that, we do run a, a number of make commands. Uh, so make clean just cleans up the current directory. And this kconfig underscore config um, parameter here allows me to specify what config file I want to use. So I'm specifying the config file and I'm calling it config.octopus. The name doesn't can be whatever you want, really. Um, I'm just labeling like this because it makes logical sense to me. I, and I am using an octopus mainboard. So this tells me that this configuration file is specifically for my octopus MCU. Um, and so that's what I've called it. Next, we're going to do make menu config, which will bring up the menu config screen that you might be familiar with if you flash Clipper before. But again, I'm telling make menu config to use this config file that I've created for the octopus. And then we're going to run the make again with the uh, kconfig underscore config equals config.octopus parameter and tell it to flash to this device. Now, the standard uh, location for a Clipper MCU is in forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by dash ID. And this part is unique, like this last part here where it says USB dash clipper and underscore, et cetera, is unique to each individual clipper board. So your MCU will not have the same alphanumeric uh, signature as mine does. So you'll need to go and find that out um, from your dev serial by ID uh, directory using the ls space dev serial by ID command. But I've already pre-populated it with the correct value for my board. Um, so basically, um, this is going to flash the, the file that we build to this device. All right, and then we issue a command to tell the system to prompt the user, and it'll print on the screen, Octopus firmware flash, please check above for any errors, press enter, continue, control C to abort. So it gives you a chance to pause and look for any errors on the screen. If any errors come up, you might want to, you know, quit out of the script and then um, do some investigation or troubleshooting. Um, and if there are no errors, then you can just press enter to continue. Now I've commented out the remaining lines because in this configuration on my test bench, I don't currently have any other MCUs. Um, but in theory, if you have like a CAN bus MCU or something like that, you could put additional commands in here to get it to um, make the file for those additional MCUs and then uh, make the clipper.bin file effectively for those additional MCUs, and then flash those files to um, the appropriate MCU. And again, if you're doing a CAN bus MCU, um, this portion is your CAN bus UUID, which again is unique to your board, your MCU. So you need to update this with the appropriate value that you got when you installed your, your CAN bus board originally. 
Um, and in this situation, because it is running CAN bus, I'm doing it a little bit differently. In this case, I was able to flash the octopus um, with one command here because I have the octopus attached via USB. Um, but for CAN bus, I first make the file. In my case, it would be for like an EBB36 board. But again, you could have configuration files for your different CAN bus boards, depending on your um, make requirements for that particular board. And then I'm running the Python 3 catapult scripts flash can dot Python script and telling it to flash to the CAN0 network, the um, UUID here. This first command uh, dash R basically resets or reboots that CAN bus board so that it's in DFU mode and ready to receive an image. And then I'm issuing another command here, again, with the, can, the flash can Python script to um, basically flash this Clipper uh, bin file that we've just made to that board. And once all that's done, um, and again, I've comment these, commented these out. Um, you can just remove the um, hashtags if you want to take away the comments and implement this for yourself. Um, so I've commented these out for now, but I've left it here for the example. And once all the flashing is done and all of your MCUs have been flashed, then you can uh, use the sudo service clipper start command to restart the clipper service. All right, so let's see how that looks in practice. Now, I am going to exit out of here. Uh, I am going to do one more thing, and that is to, if you look over here, I do have the update clipper.sh file. Um, I am going to issue a chmod command. Now, chmod is a Linux command that tells it to change the parameters or uh, attributes of a file. And in this case, I want to make the update clipper file execute by everyone. It's telling me not permitted because I need to issue that with the sudo command. When I do that, if I do an ls here, you can see that the update clipper.sh file went from gray for a typical text file to green, which in this case on my, on my host, uh, the green indicates that it's an executable file, so I can actually run that file. So I'm going to run that file. In this case, I'm going to issue the dot slash command. And dot says, in the current directory, forward slash, pick this file and go ahead and run it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. OK, so what we're doing here is confirming the um, configuration that we want to flash. Now, I pre-configured it for my MCU, which is the Octopus, the BTT Octopus with a STM32446 processor. Um, if you have a different MCU, obviously, you want to change these parameters to make them work for your own MCU. But this works for me. And so when I hit Quit here, because I'm not making any changes, uh, it should just drop me right back to the command line and continue with the script. Um, if I did have, if I had made any changes here, it would prompt me to save, uh, and I would have to say yes to save. But when I hit Q, it just drops me back out to the command line. And here it's compiling the clipper.bin file that it is going to flash to that MCU. Takes a moment or two. And here it is flashing to the octopus. We do see here file downloaded successfully. So that's good. Uh, we can ignore the uh, error message that's there. Octopus firmware flash, please check above for any errors. Press enter to continue or control C to abort. So I'm going to press enter to continue. And then uh, it reinitialized the Clipper service or restarted the Clipper service. So what does that look like uh, in the main sale interface? And if I refresh this screen, You can see that the latest version 
uh, of Clipper. And I've, I've gone and pulled a newer version because I'm allowing for uh, beta versions, beta builds in my configuration. Um, so I now have the updated 279 version, which is the latest version available on both the Octopus and the host PC, in this case, the Raspberry Pi. So there you have it. Um, so that script is um, available for you. Again, you'll find the text of the script in the video description, and you can also you know, get examples from the Voron Design website that I'll link in the video description as well. That you know, I basically modified this script a little bit for my own needs, uh, but it's effectively the same, the same steps. So if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to post in the comments, and thanks for watching.